Here we go. A big weekend of action kicks off and it's already been pretty hectic with the funky Datori John Gosden situation. I've made a video on this already which is scheduled for 5 o'clock tonight so do make sure to have a relaxing evening and watching my thoughts on the Funky Dottori and John Gosden case if you was interested but we've got some big action Newmarket, Newcastle, a few nice races at Doncaster and a jockey to follow in serious form but before all of that we're going to start a competition this week and it's going to be running until next week every new subscriber puts £2 into the pot at next week for next Saturday's action we're going to have however much money we'll have in the pot we'll be doing cash giveaways competitions etc etc so if you want to join along join the fun and increase that place not the place pot but the money in the prize fund for next week make sure to subscribe every new subscriber equals two pounds so it could be a big weekend next weekend but it's a big weekend this weekend Two, we're going to start off at Newmarket in the 205 listed stakes where I think the market has got this completely wrong with one horse in particular. But starting with the favourite, the favourite could easily go and win this by a couple of lengths. To be honest, she was very impressive on debut and that's Minnetonka for Richard Hannon. Jim Crowley takes the ride, switches from Pat Dobbs. That wouldn't be a negative or a positive at all. They're both terrific jockeys. The one second in the market, Lazo. Frankie Dettori's only ride on the day has been ditched by John Gosden. Can land Franco Dettori, land the spoils at Newmarket on his only ride of the day? That would be something special for Frankie Dettori. This is a very big ride in his career. You wouldn't think it with his CV, but it, it's come to what it is now. This listed Philly stakes at Newmarket at 205 could be pivotal for the rest of his career. So hopefully we'll see him in the winning enclosure but one at a huge price who has been overlooked in the market for a reason that I don't understand at all absolutely flawless David Lochnane trained owned by David Lowe and ridden by Laura Pearson this horse three career starts two wins first one at Southwell was well backed and did it nicely at the end of the day was overlooked again at Chester she got the job done on good to soft ground and then ran at Beverly on good to firm and I don't think it was the ground that beat her that day she got wiped out at the start never got a clear run and then had to pull out very wide and when you pull wide at Beverly you may as well be giving up your chance there William Buick had no other chance to be honest but Laura Pearson back on board today 20 to 1 I think she's going to be with an ice cold from Laura Pearson out the back she won't have a chance she won't even be in the TV screen with a couple of furlongs to go but Laura Pearson I'm hoping can just canoodle this filly into the race and if you look at the extra place markets on Bet365 it's utterly ridiculous you can get 10 to 1 for this horse to finish in the top 6 each way of course but 10 to 1 she's going to be held up out the back she's going to be passing fillies she's swerved Ascot she's been targeted for this 20 to 1 she's on the drift as well she might even get bigger so maybe hang fire and hope for a bigger price later on but 20 to 1 I think this horse in the place market 6 places she's just got to beat 5 fillies home and there's a few bigger prices here which probably don't have much of a chance and there's a few shorter in the betting with your own reputation as well so yeah 10 to 1 for the top 6 that's a decent bet in the next race one at a bit of a shorter price but John Gosden showing Stirwell who was a non-stayer at Ascot carried 10, uh, a 9 stone 11 pounds in the race over 1 mile 6 furlongs I should say swooped from 10th to 1st in 2 furlongs from the 3rd pole down to the 1 pole got tired didn't stay now this horse is kind of a little bit of a tricky horse because you watch him over one mile four furlongs you think he wants one mile six you watch him over one mile six you think he wants one mile four but I think this could be the right trip today although it might be a little bit of a messy race I think there's not a lot of pace the Godolphin horses probably won't go forward universal order is a confirmed order horse so Stowell might just make the run in your pavlin he's going to have a tricky job on his hands either way but this horse definitely does have the class to be winning at 10 to 3 over to Newcastle and the big race the Northumberland plate handicap where the favourite has absolutely no chance of winning Trushan 11 to 2. I'm not sure why because this horse was well beaten. 
last year, I should say, sorry, off a mark of 118 and carried 10 stone for that day. She now carries, he now carries 10 stone 8. And last year they had a £7 claimer on as well. So this horse is carrying nearly a stone more than he carried last year. And he couldn't win last year. Although he probably is a better horse this time round. He's won a few good ones since then. But 10 stone 8 is giving about £20 to his next rival. Is thoroughly opposable at 11 to 2. The one I do fancy is one smooth operator. Brian Ellison and Ben Robinson takes the ride. Now this horse has run on the all-weather 12 times, has finished in the places 11 times. It's so consistent, but I think he's still on the upgrade. He stays all days, and I think his handicap mark could be lenient. He chucks a race away when beaten by Nate the Goet, I should say, at Newcastle. I, I think he stays all day, but he just got to the front. The rider kind of dropped his own towards the finish, and he just kind of Stopped. I, I don't think he did does a lot out in front. He hasn't been to the front a lot in his career, to be perfectly honest, because he he's run in some pretty good races. He's always held up out the back and comes with a late run and just never seems to get there. I'm hoping that a strong pace today means that the leaders are coming back to him and he can just stick his long neck out at the finish and win at 9-1. to one. Definitely a good each way bet though with some bookmakers paying 6 places. You can probably use the each way extra market as well to get a few more if needs be. And also one worth noting, Valley Forge, she's my horse to follow for the season. Was pretty poor at Newmarket but was subject to a bit of a gamble at Haydock. Opened up at 15-2, to two, went off 4-1 to one, and he won cosily at the end of the day. Beat Golden Flame by a head. The winning in margin was more. He was left with quite a lot to do by David Porter, but he got there in the end of the day, and it was a pretty impressive performance. He's only gone up £4 for that. He's never raced on the all-weather, though, which would be a little bit of a concern, but I think Andrew Bolden, you've just got to trust that he will take to the all-weather, and if he does, he could be a progressive handicapper who will be travelling into this race like an absolute travelly thing. He'll be the last off the bridle if all goes to plan, and it's just if he can get the job done. So them two are definitely of interest and there'll be some single each way bets for me. One at a huge price, who dares wins? I think the 10 year old has won this race before. He could be down to a lenient handicap mark off a mark of 95. He hasn't been running too bad over hurdles. Was pretty poor at Haydock, but before that he was in good form and finishing a very good second at Newboy over three miles. He will stay all day. Safi Osborne from Stall 1 could have some traffic problems. She'll need a very good ride. You think this horse might try go prominently enough and just try out gallop the rest of them. He definitely is capable on his day. He's 50 to 1, a huge price. But definitely one of no. And we'll be finishing off the day at Doncaster, starting off in the 7 o'clock. Lewis Edmonds, he's my jockey to follow for the flat season. He's in some very good form at the minute. I think he's got about a 20% strike rate in the last 15, 16 days. So he's definitely a jockey to follow. Teams up with higher mates. And this horse could be very lenient, leniently treated off a mark of 76. If you think that he got within a couple of lengths of lethal nymph and risk, who are now rated 100 and 80, or 87 I should say respectively for Clive, Cl Clive Cox and Roger Varian. So them two were very progressive horses. I think he's a proper speed horse. He loves good to firm ground. His best form has come on a better surface. He was second on his latest start and his second reappearance as a four-year-old when giving away a little bit of weight to Hebrides, the William Haggis horse who won just by a neck at the end of the day, gave away weight, and this horse has won since off a mark of 84, so you think a mark of 76 could be lenient for higher mates. He'd be finishing off the day. Also worth noting, Lewis Edmonds has three other rides later on on the card as well. Jump the gun, he's one of interest, having some decent course form in his only previous star, but he's not in the best of form. He's worth probably keeping an eye on more than anything. And Rochambeau in the last race for Julie Camacho. He hasn't ridden for Julie Camacho yet this season. Teams up for two guards tonight. It'd be nice if he could get a winner for her and hopefully have more opportunities in the future. But that's all my tips for today. Thanks a lot for watching. And as I said, 
every new subscriber two pounds in the pot you do not want to be missing out on the prizes next week so do subscribe drop a comment and a like only if you enjoyed the video of course thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you again next time